What's up y'all? Alvin here and today we're doing Redfish on the Fly Part 2. Here. I tell the good jokes. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna talk about rods, we're gonna talk about reels, we're gonna talk about lines, we're gonna talk a little bit about flies. A lot of stuff to talk about flies. <laughs> Leaders and tippet. And a couple of things you might not have thought about. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so first up, I gotta say that this is the recommended equipment for the type of red fishing that I'm doing most of the time. So this is gonna vary from place to place, but if you're fishing anywhere in the kind of middle Texas coast or anywhere else where you're sight casting to redfish in shallow water, shallow water being say two feet deep or less, this is gonna be a pretty good starting point. Things are gonna vary, so don't roast me <laughs> in the comments. If you've got suggestions or ideas, anything to add to the conversation, feel free, please drop those in the comments. All right, so let's get started. For rods, typically I'm gonna recommend a seven, an eight, or a nine weight rod. Um, fast action, now, depending on where you are, you know, like I said, if you're in Louisiana and you're chasing bull reds, your go-to might be a nine or a 10 weight rod. But for most of the stuff we're doing, seven, eight, and nine weight rods are sort of the go-to. I prefer an eight weight. That would be my go-to redfish rod. Uh, my wife, she prefers a nine weight. Uh, as far as rod length goes, most of those rods are gonna come in at nine feet. Uh, if you can find an eight and a half foot or one of the seven foot 11 um, bass type rods. Those will work great for redfish. The shorter rods are gonna be really good, especially for those short, you know, 10 to 15 foot cast, 20 foot cast. Those rods are gonna work great. Now, I would probably not pick the shorter, you know, the seven foot 11 rod for my main rod because I don't think they're quite as good for making some of the longer accurate casts you have to make from time to time, but you know, they're gonna work great for the short cast. If you got one and you're wanting to get into red fishing, go for it, just use that rod. Okay, now when it comes to lines, there are so many different lines. I'm gonna say there's probably more options when it comes to lines than there are for rods. So if you got your floating lines, you got your sinking lines, you got your sink tip lines, you got your weight forward lines, you got your redfish tapers, you got your bonefish tapers. There's so many choices out there. You've got a tropic line, you've got a mono core line, you've got a cold water salt water line. <laughs> the choices are endless and it's really kind of tough to make that final decision. I'm gonna just go ahead and put this out there. Just go with the one you got and as you learn more about this, then you may be able to fine tune what you need. Now the optimum would be to go to your local fly shop and cast your rod with all these different lines because that's the only way you're really gonna know which one works the best. Or if you're fishing with a guide, tell them like, hey, do you have this particular line? I would like to fish with this line. Um, you know, trial and error is really the only way to decide which fly line is gonna work best for you. I would recommend some type of weight forward floating line in a bonefish, redfish, or even a bass taper. Now the bass tapers tend to be a little bit heavier forward, so those are gonna be great for throwing bigger flies, but also for making those quick shot casts, um, but maybe not the best all around redfish line. Like I said, if you have to make some longer cast, the shorter rods and those short bass heads may not be the best thing for making the longer cast, but a lot of the casts that we make are 
you know, 20 feet and under. So you should be okay with that. <laughs> Notice I'm covering a lot of bases here and uh, trying to make this as simple as possible for you, but it can get pretty technical if you want it to. All right, so uh, when it comes to backing, not a whole lot to think about. Most of your eight, nine weight reels are gonna come loaded with plenty of 20 to 30 pound backing, definitely enough for red fishing. If you've got 100, 150 yards, you're gonna be good for most of the red fish you're gonna hook. Now, like I've said in the past though, we're using these rigs for more than just red fishing. So if you're gonna be doing some bone fishing, you wanna make sure you got, you know, 150, maybe even 200 yards of backing. If your reel will hold it, you might as well put it on there. Okay, so, you might have noticed I skipped from rods to lines because really your rod and your line are probably the two most important parts of your gear when it comes to delivering the fly to a redfish or any other fish for that matter. But we do focus a lot of time on reels when it comes to saltwater fishing. And you know, there's, there is good reason for that. Um, you know, you want to make sure that reel is not going to rust after exposure from salt water. Um, you definitely want to rinse them at the end of the day. I know some people who religiously do not rinse their reels at the end of the day and they're like, it's made for salt water. If it can't stand up, then I shouldn't have it. <laughs> but, you know, probably best to rinse them off at the end of the day. Uh, the other thing is you don't need a super heavy duty drag for redfish, but and I've caught redfish on some rinky dinky reels back in the day because that's all I could afford. But like I said, if you're going to be using this rig for more than just redfish, and you might as well go ahead and get a good quality reel, something that's got a good drag on it, something that's not going to rust out after a couple of days in the salt. And more than likely, most of these reels are going to last you a lifetime. So brands, Pick your favorite brand. I use certain brands, but that doesn't mean that those are the best. Uh, they just mean that that's what was available to me or that caught my eye or I got it for free. <laughs> Let's be honest here. <laughs> now, I got uh, a handful of questions in the comments on the last video about leaders. And just like the rest of this stuff, I really like to keep it simple when it comes to leaders. A lot of times I'll use just pre-tapered leaders, you know, leaders out of the bag that I bought from a fly shop somewhere or I ordered online. Um, occasionally I will sit down and tie leaders, but typically if I'm tying a leader, it's because I'm somewhere and I don't have a pre-tapered leader to put on my line. Uh, I always have tippet, always have spools of tippet, so I can make a leader if I have to, but it's usually not my go-to. Uh, the pre-tapered leaders are fine in most circumstances. Maybe 12 pound would be my go-to. Um, you know, if the fish are spooky, I may go as low as 10 pound, but I'm a lot more likely to be using 20 pound than I am 10 pound. So, but I usually carry that 10, 12, 15 and maybe 20 pound tippet and leaders. And that's gonna cover most of my bases. All right, so I said we would talk a little bit about flies and I may have to make a whole nother video specifically on redfish flies, but I'll give you the basics right here. So think about red, redfish eat. So it's gonna be a crab, a shrimp, or some type of bait fish. So you're gonna to wanna to be able to imitate those three creatures with your fly selection. Another thing to think about is depth. So we're talking about fish in shallow water, but there's a huge difference between six inches of water and two feet of water. So you wanna have flies that will sink fairly quickly, flies that will sink slowly, and unweighted flies. So that will cover most of your bases. So we got six categories, shrimp, crabs, bait fish, weighted, slightly weighted, and unweighted flies. Pretty much everything that I'm throwing, everything that's in my box is gonna fall in one of those six categories, usually in two of those six categories. So an unweighted shrimp pattern, a heavily weighted crab pattern, or a lightly weighted streamer pattern, which is gonna imitate some type of bait fish. Like I said, we can really dive deep into these flies. 
feel free to ask questions, make comments. I'll probably end up doing a whole video just on redfish flies. Okay, so at the beginning, I said, I'm gonna throw out a couple things that you might not have thought about. Um, one of these, you know, is super obvious. The other, not so much. Um, the one that's not so obvious is clothing. And I, I do consider the clothing that you wear on the boat or if you're out waiting, an essential part of your equipment. Most of the places you're throwing after redfish are gonna be warm and sunny. So you wanna wear clothing that's gonna offer you good sun protection, um, long sleeve shirts, gloves, uh, <laughs> you know, hats, uh, neck gaiters, the whole nine. I typically wear long sleeves and pants on some of the hottest days of the year. <laughs> when it's not so hot, I'll put my shorts on. <laughs> but you really gotta be careful out there, protect yourself from the sun, because there's nothing worse than getting sunburned. Worst case scenario, getting heat stroke, and that's really gonna cut into your fishing time, that's really gonna cut into your enjoyment of the day on the water. So proper clothing, sun protection, is an essential part of your equipment. Now, what is that other mystery piece of gear that I said I was gonna tell you about from the beginning? Well, it's sunglasses, polarized sunglasses. Not having a good pair or a pair of polarized sunglasses may be the biggest disadvantage for catching redfish on the fly if you're sight casting to them. If you can't see them, you don't know where to cast. And believe it or not, I've been on a trip before and been trying to see fish and then realized like, oh, I can't see anything because I got the wrong colored glasses on. Most of the time you're gonna want something in the brown to copper tones, maybe even yellow on a really overcast day, but you're probably not gonna want your dark gray glasses that you use for offshore fishing or even lake fishing. So a good pair of polarized glasses will make a huge difference when it comes to seeing fish on the flats. Uh, I always carry an extra pair in the boat with me in case one of my clients shows up with the wrong tent and they can't see the fish. I hand them the ones with the right tent and they're like, oh my God, this is a night and day difference. <laughs> so yes, make sure you got you a good pair of polarized glasses in the proper tent. Okay. Hopefully that information was helpful for you guys out there. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel because I got at least one more coming. We're going to talk about some more specific techniques. All right, I want to thank everybody for watching these videos. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. And in the meantime, good luck on the water.